Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have a really interesting problem for you. It's not one that I made up myself. I found it in a book and I thought that's a really neat problem. And the way it was explained as follows. We have two objects, object A and object B. Object A moves upward on the y-axis. Object B moves from the right to the left, at least initially on the x-axis, but object B is always pointed directly to wherever object A is. So as object A moves up, object B begins to curve because they're always will be pointing until they meet together along the y-axis. So there's the y-axis right here. Now the reason why they meet is because object B moves at twice the speed of object A. So eventually object B will catch object A. And the equation that describes the path that object B takes is right here, f of x equals one-third the quantity x to the three-halves minus three times x to the one-half plus two. Now, I haven't figured out yet how that equation was derived. And for those who are adventurous, see if you can figure it out. I didn't spend the time to try and figure it out, but that would be interesting to see how that equation came about, but there it is. And of course, if we want to find the length of the path that object B takes, we use the same technique as before. We use the technique where we find the arc length of that path. So we need to take the derivative of that. So we have f prime of x is equal to one third times three halves x to the one half power minus three times one half, which is three over two x to the minus one half. And of course, the derivative constant is zero. Looks like we can factor out the three halves, which means that f prime of x is equal to the threes will cancel out, so we end up with one half times x to the one half minus x to the minus one half. Okay, now we can go ahead and square that. So we have f prime of x quantity squared is equal to one quarter times the first term squared was, gives us x, the last term squared gives us 1 over x, and the middle term, x to the 1 half times x to the minus 1 half, that's 1, but the minus, that's minus 1, times 2, that gives you minus 2, like this. All right, now we should look at that and go, that makes sense because I think I know what's going to happen when we plug it in here. So we have the length is equal to the integral, we're going to integrate from x equal 1 to x equal 0. It doesn't matter if it's from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. If we get a negative answer, we just flip the limits around. And so we integrate from, um, the, we integrate the square root of 1 plus the derivative squared, which is 1 quarter times x minus 2. Did I forget a plus here? Yes, I did. Plus 1 over x quantity times dx. All right, now you'll see that if I multiply this times this, I get a minus one half there. So let's just do it. L equals the integral from zero to one times the square root of one plus one quarter x minus one half plus one quarter times one over x dx. Then of course we can combine these two terms, so now we end up with L is equal to the integral from zero to one of the square root of one quarter x plus one half plus one quarter times one over x times dx. And then we can factor out a one quarter, bring it in the front, we have L is equal to one half times the integral from zero to one times the square root of, here we get x, plus 2 plus 1 over x, like this times dx. And now it turns out we can take that expression and write it as the square of a binomial. So now we write L is equal to 1 half times integral from 0 to 1, and here we have the square root of x to the 1 half plus x to the minus 1 half quantity squared times dx. Notice we started with this, and we end up with the same thing, but with a plus instead of a minus. And of course, the square will negate the square root. We end up with L is equal to 1 half times the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the 1 half plus x to the minus 1 half times dx. And that, of course, is a reasonably easy integral to integrate. 
So let's come up here. We have L is equal to, uh, I think we still have the one half in the front, so one half times x to the one half, that becomes x to the three halves, divided by the new exponent three halves, plus x to the one half divided by the new exponent one half, evaluated from zero to one. Okay. Can I simplify this a little bit? Yeah, let's do that. So L is equal to one half times, this becomes two thirds x to the three halves plus two x to the one half evaluated from zero to one. So that's a little cleaner that way. Now when we plug in the upper limit, we have L is equal to one half times x to the three halves, well when it's one, one to the three halves is one times two thirds, so we get two thirds plus one, square root of one is one, so plus two, and then when we plug in zeros, that, so you know, minus zero, minus zero, we don't have to worry about that. So, multiplying times one half, we get L is equal to one third plus one, one third, not right, one half, one third plus one, so L equals four thirds, or approximately equal to 1.333, like that. All right, there we go. So the distance that B travels before it catches A is a little bit over 1, 1.333, and that seems reasonable. It's got to be more than 1, uh, and it shouldn't be a very big number because B travels twice as fast as A. So that seems like a reasonable answer, but that is, again, how it's done. Fun problem, huh?